So the financials are out. You'll see we were on the revenue front, we were flat, mm -hmm. but we we have experienced as many some uh, some clients caving the COVID crisis, and so we've replaced that revenue. But uh, but unfortunately, we have a little bit of a, a well a, an adjustment on our client service packages. So some of our, even some of our monthly revenue members, clients weren't able to, to make it all the way through the year. So, but we're glad that we did maintain. Um, mm -hmm. The bottom line is what we've been focused on continuing to drive down our costs. And uh, even though we're down over last year in our losses, 785,000 of those losses were non-cash, so non-operational losses. It was just the uh, compensation shares and options just in the last quarter. So we actually drove down costs, operating costs, by about uh, 65, 68%. So that's three years in a row since we started taking full control of all payment processes. Uh, driven down by more than 50% each year, uh, closer to 60 on average. So our focus is still the U.S. expansion, and uh, we're excited because Staples, they, uh, we have been working very closely with them, and this next month here, October, is small and medium business month. So they're launching a major campaign to their preferred clients. They've got uh, anywhere between 360 and 700,000 preferred clients now. So they're doing a, a marketing campaign directly to that group. But again, all, at all store levels, they're gonna be marketing with hard collateral, marketing uh, pieces, to press this particular program with all the clients that walk in the door as well. So they haven't done that before in the relationship we've uh, been working with them. It's all been quiet, to be perfectly honest. There hasn't been a major marketing push on Staples part, but they're ramping up and the first week of October is when it kicks off. So we're, we're excited about that for sure. And now you know pretty much as much as I do. <laughs> we we are we are also pushing very strongly and steadily now for I think we're going into our eighth month. Well, certainly more than seven and a half months of work with our acquisition target in the states, and uh, things are moving very well through that process. There have been hiccups as is the case with all of these opportunities, but, uh, but we're very, very hopeful. And in fact, uh, bordering on confident that we're looking at a nice partnership, an acquisition of course, but the, a good working partnership with this firm headquartered in the States. And now mm -hmm. you know as much as I know. So maybe Charlie, um, I'm I'm not really sure if this uh, question is you know kind of um, suitable at the moment. But can you elaborate a little bit more, um, you know, on the timeline of that acquisition, um, you know, activity? Is there like any expected timeline that you can disclose to uh, to everyone, or it's still kind of like we're still, like we're still working on it? Yeah, we're working on a a deal closure by the end of this calendar. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in the new year with the, with the uplist. So that's what's, that's what's on the schedule right now. But Charlie, maybe I'll ask a question. Sure. Um, what is the process of converting um, leads from staples to active uh, ongoing um, uh, um, sort of IT work uh, from the nerds end. 
Good. There are, there are two separate projects. We just refer to them as Project A and Project B. Project A is a full consulting, nerds on site consulting program for Staples clients, SME clients. So those leads actually come directly to nerds on site. They're branded Staples, but the clients have a, a, a special phone number that we've set up in our system and a special website as well. So Staples is aware of them as these seeds come in, but we go out, we visit the client site, we do a, co a consultation, do a literally a, a needs assessment and provide proposal. And we bill the client directly and we pay a, a, an override to Staples for that work. And if it winds up being a monthly contract, they get, to, they get the monthly share of revenue as well. The project B is different. It is literally an install and setup contract. And this is for new hardware purchases, computers, routers, uh, wireless setups, and printers, where at the store level, the service is sold to the client. It's then passed from Staples over to our system. We assign it. Uh, we bill once a month for the work that has been done on project B. So two separate revenue treatment programs, project A, we get the revenue and then share with Staples and second project, Staples gets the revenue up front and then shares with us once a month. I'm gonna follow up because obviously this is a, a very big opportunity to drive uh, revenue from the nerd side. Yes. Um, how, how will you be able to, I don't want to say assist Staples, but to, um, to facilitate uh, a kind of catalytic process where um, uh, Staples uh, putting you out in front of their customers can be there can be sort of a, more eyes uh, uh, attracted to that notice. Right. Well, we're, the, we've been doing, working with them on a forensic audit of Project B to find out exactly how we can, you know, there have been some challenges on the Staples end in the, uh, the actual point of sale system that they have in their stores, talking to that interloper agent for us to get the notice of the work. So it, uh, they're upgrading. And I've had uh, a terrific communication, both the Zoom and the email with the new COO of Staples, who's very committed to this project specifically. So uh, very, to be frank, very open-minded and looking for ways for us to push on project A dramatically. So as we may or may not be aware, Staples has a, a true cultural brick and mortar operation they have built in their, in their new designs and they're rolling out another 20 over the next 18 months. Store settings that are set up with uh, literally training facilities, shared office space, um, conference rooms and boardrooms available for rent along with a complete revamp on the, the actual merchandising of product and service in the store. So these are tailored in a way that is quite unique in the marketplace in North America, not aware of anything that comes close. These are tailored specifically to the SME player as quite, quite effectively their single solitary brick and mortar partner. They don't need to rent office space. They don't need to rent any kind of space. They can come get webinar training. They can share in shared office space, share uh, with other enterprisers. And we're hopeful that we'll help them build that particular brand out. 
So, yes, we're uh, we're actually very excited. I'm still pushing hard, certain that that Staples earns that position as the only true retail partner for SMEs in the tech space. Does it make any sense for nerds to have on-site representation in those uh, SME uh, tailored uh, suites? Yeah, they actually do have their own their own players on site, right? Um, they're only working with retail. They don't go on site. They have tried that um, two separate occasions that I'm aware of. Someone has they actually tried it three times, and they it didn't go well. They closed all three of them down. So this is why they're focused on a partnership with a branded player like nerds. The on-site tech crew, I mean, there may be conversations that take place after this next month. We've got another uh, series of calls scheduled to uh, audit, forensically audit the results. So we're, uh, we're open-minded and they certainly seem to be very open-minded. So we'll see what what they uh, what we find after this month of a full marketing blitz on their part? It, um, <clears throat> because it would be um, uh, it's hard to imagine a more. Uh, I mean, I think you should be you should be uh, celebrated and congratulated for getting this opportunity, because I think that there's tons of other enterprises that would have. Uh, would have killed to be in this position, uh, uh, and now the um, you know the key is to be able to uh, you know to secure some kind of um, response rate, almost I guess, uh, to the opportunity. Because I think that once you're once people understand the service that you can deliver to them, uh, and that can be promoted by staples and nerds as you know, with the large success rate that you have, I think that, the, that there's a big chance to lead, for that to lead to to a growth in revenue that is multiples. Yep, I agree. We're uh, you know, we're we're disappointed how things started in the uh, partnership, but they are very disappointed as well. And we worked our development team every week. We were on a shared call with everyone on both teams to work on their challenges on the software and hardware front of their operation. Uh, so they, they are very serious about the investment that they're making and definitely building that partnership in a much more visible manner than they have in the past. Right. Again, our, our brand will be in hard collateral inside each one of the stores. So that's that's one new step as well for us. But the push in their client, their preferred client space is the biggest part of this. COVID, uh, they've expanded that team from the 365 to almost 700,000 now. So sure. we're excited about helping them build very strong, very strong trust dynamic between the client and Staples and us acting right. as that brand and trust agent. Okay, um, Charlie, I apologize. I'm, uh, uh, I, um, I only got the email this morning and uh, I, have, uh, I have to leave the call now, but uh, no I appreciate that you speak with me and, and we'll speak soon. Th no, thanks again. Thanks, okay. Doug. Take care, Bye. talk soon. Bye. Thank you for joining those who are still on the call with us. Um, have you any questions, comments, queries at all that I can uh, that I can help with? More than happy to. Good. Who has the me? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. May maybe if uh, if there is no um, you know any other question, uh, probably uh, I think we we can conclude the call here. And if you can send me the the recording.
um, and then I'm going to make it into a video and then I can send it to everyone um, in our private list. So, you know, those who might have, um, you know, who, who couldn't have um, attended the, the meeting, they can still, you know, like get the latest updates from you and um, they can see the question and, and answer session. Mr. Folkart, thanks, uh, thanks for joining. I believe you're joining from uh, from Netherlands, so appreciate your support and taking the time to join today. All right, then we'll uh, we'll call it a wrap. All right, thank you so much again, Paul, for your support, and uh, thank you. Expect good things in the near future.